Hi everyone, I'm Lorenzo and in this video I'm going to talk about all Sonic games for the Sony PlayStation 2. Sonic Heroes is an import from Japan and you can spot this from the very start of the game because if you've played other Japanese games you know that the circle button is X and the X button is circle. On the American version they didn't change this either. Also if you would ever choose between the GameCube version or the PS2 one, always choose the GameCube version. It has solid frame rate. Unlike the PS2 one that has inconsistent frames, which ruined the experience many times. But if you're playing it on GameCube, you're in luck, you have one problem less. In this game, you go in teams, you don't play alone. You get four teams, Team Sonic, Team Dark, Team Rose and Team Chaotix. Each team behaves the same, meaning that each team is comprised of three characters. One for speed, one for flying and one for smashing. And you need to change characters often to get through the levels, either to run faster with Sonic, or to smash something with Knuckles, or to take Tails and fly all three characters over something into, into something. The level designs are pretty straightforward and boss battles are a little bit challenging, which is nice. I mean, it has that sort of balance between challenging and easy. It's an okay game. Not incredible, not bad, but it's still good. Oh, and a nice little detail I liked about the game was that each team had their own motivations to start the levels. So, even if you play in the same levels with each team in particular, they have different motivations and have different cutscenes. So, basically, you can say that you get four stories one per each team, even if all these stories happen in the same levels. Sonic Mega Collection is a compilation of games. I'm just going to list the game as it will take me hours to talk about each game in particular and review it. So let me just tell you which games Mega Collection Plus includes. So it includes Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Sonic Spinball, Dr. Robotnik Spin Bean Machine, Sonic the Hedgehog 3, Sonic and Knuckles, Sonic 3D Blast, Blue Sphere, Knuckles in Sonic 2, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and you also get additional unlockable games, Flicky, Ristar, Comic Zone, and The Ooze. And if you get the Mega Collection Plus, you get in addition the, follow the following games, Sonic Chaos, Sonic Drift, Sonic Labyrinth and Sonic Blast. Sonic Gems Collection is another compilation of games. In this one you get Sonic CD, Sonic the Fighters, Sonic R, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Sonic the Hedgehog Triple Trouble, Sonic Spinball, Sonic Drift 2, Tails Sky Patrol, Tails Adventure and you also get some unlockable games. Vector Man, Vector Man 2, Bonanza Bros, Streets of Rage, Streets of Rage 2, and Streets of Rage 3. Sonic Riders might seem like a bad idea. I mean, Sonic can run fast. Why would he need a board? Well, the game isn't that bad. I mean, the story is bad because it's nonsense. And the ending, well, if you have good dark humor, you can counsel yourself that you've managed to unfold an ending that stupid. But if you expect the story to blow your pants, well, just don't expect it, play another game. The racing though, it's solid. You get 16 characters to choose from, and it's nice that they are split into 3 categories. You get characters of speed, that can grind on rails, flying characters, that can go through this gates and power characters that smash stuff and this gives some nice variety during races you also get a lot of boards and other means of going fast like skates and uh, bikes each with different stats you also need air for any means of transport when you go out of air you run on foot until the air regenerates air is the boost in this game and bikes use the most air, but are faster. So there is some strategy and depth to the racing. It's a good game. And Sonic Riders Zero Gravity is the sequel. 
and it feels pretty much like the first game. You get a new nonsense story, I prefer the one from the first one rather than the one in the sequel. You get 19 characters, the first one had 16, and new tracks. But you get less tracks than in the first one. The first one had 19 tracks and here you get 16 tracks, but at least you get more characters in this one. And there is a major difference between the first game and the sequel. In the first game you had to be more strategic. You had the air meter, you had the different stats on vehicles, it was very difficult to master the game. But the sequel is way easier than the first game. So it's a matter of taste whether you like to have a little bit of challenge or you like the game to be very easy. Oh and another difference from the first game is that now in the sequel you have the ability to slow down time by pressing the square button. And it's useful when doing sharp turns. You'll get more of those sharp turns in the second game. In Rust you get a new nonsense story, different tracks, so different content. And with the differences it's pretty much up to you which one you would want more. I like both of them. And I recommend you play both of them. Both are very awesome games. In Sonic Unleashed, after Dr. Eggman shoots a ray into the atmosphere, a side effect of that ray is that Sonic gets transformed into a werehog. Like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde style transformations, during the day you play with Sonic and during the night with the evil version of you. And in this game you get two different gameplay styles. With Sonic you get to run fast and get some very intense tracks to run in, and with the werehog you do platforming and mindless brawling. The controls are good and the visuals and level designs are nice and varied. I like the game. Shadow the Hedgehog sounds like those type of games that were conceived in a stupid way. Like for example the boss asks the people in, in a meeting, ok people, what should we put in the game to make it the ultimate experience? And those people in the meeting just threw in ideas without, without thinking that it doesn't really fit the character, Shadow. They, so they threw ideas like, oh, we should put aliens. And any badass character should have guns and explode stuff. And the boss must have been like, that's it, print it. That's how Shadow the Hedgehog feels. I mean, I know the character is badass, but why would you put guns in the hands of a cartoon hedgehog? And then put him to shoot aliens, robots and even humans. And they added one of the most cliché plots. Shadow loses his memory. He has amnesia and wants to find out about his past. Sounds familiar? You get 22 levels. And you can choose if you want to be a good guy or a bad guy. If you want to be the bad guy, you shoot all the humans. If you want to be the good guy, then you need to shoot all the aliens. But shooting mechanics are so annoying that if you're like me, you won't shoot anyone. And you will just go straight to the emerald at the end of the levels and avoid any enemy. In terms of variety, the different levels look distinct. You get multiple types of weapons like pistols, bazookas, laser rifles, you get different moves, you get to drive different vehicles in some levels, but the overall mechanics feel wonky. Even if the game sounds good on paper, it isn't that impressive when you get to play it. Ok, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to be a very special member of the channel, just click the join button and choose one of the perks. If you want, follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and there will be timeless of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching!